In this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to correctly color grade Apple ProRes log footage in DaVinci Resolve for free. Now I'm going to demonstrate this using two clips, completely different situations. So make sure you stick around to the end to see the exact step by step process. First things first, enable log shooting on your iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max. To activate this, go into your settings, camera, formats, and turn on Apple ProRes and change the ProRes encoding to log. This should make your footage very desaturated and flat. That's good, we want that. First things first, open up DaVinci Resolve. For timeline, create a new timeline. Make sure the settings are set to 4K and you can put this at 24 or 30p. For me, I'm gonna be using 30 frames per second. Once you've created your timeline, drop in the video you're gonna be color grading, which is the Pro res blog video with a clip there head over to the color tab and this is where you have all your settings you've got your nodes up top you've got your scopes at the bottom and on the left side you have all your tools for color correction now there's two versions of color grading i'm going to show you today one's going to be the simple conversion from log to rec 709 usable footage and the second is going to be a more stylized a little bit more spicy so for the basic bare bones conversion all you need is two nodes maximum three nodes if you're adding on a creative lot on top so for this one first i'm going to show you just with three nodes how you can get the final complete color graded look. So first off, we're going to create our three nodes. The first one we're going to call correction. The second one we're going to call color space or CST. And then the final node we're going to call our LUT. With your second node selected, go over to effects and search for color space transform. Drop this effect over there and then in your input gamma, all you have to do is change it to Apple Log. Leave everything else the same and you can already see the image has been corrected from log footage to Rec 709. Just like that, before and after, you can already see massive difference between the two, but we're not done just yet. We have to correct it a little bit, which is why we put the correction node before the color space transform, so you have all that detail to work with. If you wanna change your white balance, you wanna change your exposure, you can do that in the first node. So for me here, I'm gonna increase the exposure a little bit in the HDR wheels tab. Then I'm gonna to go to my primary. Here, I'm gonna adjust the gain, gamma, and lift. And also I'm gonna add on some saturation. So the main thing I do here is add on 55 to the saturation and about five to the color boost because I feel like that gives you the best balance for Apple log footage. Now with it off, that's what it looks like and turning it on, you can see it makes a pretty huge difference to before the correction and after the correction. And obviously from log to rec 709, this is pretty much done. Like I said, two nodes is all you really need to get the conversion done correctly with the good amount of details in your video. But we created a third node if you wanna take it to the next level and drop on a color LUT, which is what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna hop over to my LUT node, go over to my LUTs here and drop on the Joker LUT, which I got from Filmrite, just drop that on. It is way too strong. You can clearly see it changes the hues a lot, but it is too strong. So click on your LUT node again and go over to your key and drop the key output to 0.5. That's about 50%. I think this looks pretty good looking at it before and after, but I still think it's a bit too strong. So we're gonna drop it to 0.4 or about 40%. And I think that looks very, very nice. Now that's before and after. You're pretty much done. You could just leave it here. This is uploadable. But what I'm gonna do is spice it up a little bit, not too much, by adding some glows to the image and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Again, it's just for free. So we're gonna create a new node before the LUT. I'm gonna rename this node Glow. And then I'm gonna go into my effects at the top right again and search for Glow. Drop that onto this new node and you can see you already got a nice hazy glow effect on the lights behind you. Now all you have to do is adjust these exposure settings to make it match perfectly. You don't want it to affect your subject way too much. It only has to be there in the highlight spots. So that's what I'm doing here, finding the right balance of threshold and spread. I also changed the color to what the color of the glow should be. And then I can go over to global blend. And this is where I can adjust exactly how much it affects. I don't want it to look too fake, so make sure you do this correctly. That's looking absolutely brilliant, but I wanna add on a vignette now to bring in more focus to the subject. And I think that's gonna help with that. So create a new node at the end of everything and head over to the windows. This is called a power window. We're gonna draw on a circle, which is gonna be around the subject, which is roughly your face area. And then use the outer circle edge to feather it out a little bit more. Now, all I'm gonna do is check what it looks like. So that's your feathered image. Now I'm gonna click invert and I'm only affecting the outside of the image. Go over to your curves and drop the exposure, increase your highlights a little bit to get that shine back from the glow. And just like that, before and after, absolutely crazy what difference you're getting there. This is a perfectly usable image. You could use this, upload it, and it looks absolutely brilliant. Now, the second video here is an outdoor shot, no studio lighting, and I'm gonna show you how to color grade those type of videos. So this is the clip. 
shooting a leaf. We've got the sun in the background. Looks really, really nice. So I'm going to head over to the color tab once again. We're going to start with the same basics. We've got a correction, color space transform, and our LUT or our grade. So I'm going to go to the color space transform, drop on the Apple LUT. In my correction, I'm going to decrease the color temperature because I want this to be a cooler shot. So we're going to go to minus 200 for the temperature. Next, what I'm going to do is increase the contrast a fair bit because I want this to be a punchy shot. Go over to grade node, select curves, and tap on hue versus hue. Now this is where, like Lightroom Mobile, you're gonna have a full wheel here of colors, or sorry, a graph of colors, and you can select individual colors and move them around. So I want my greens to be not so warm. I want them to be foresty, frosty green, if that makes sense. So we're gonna go over to our greens. Uh, I'm going to isolate the green tone that I'm specifically looking for, tap on it, it creates three dots, and I can just move this around. You can see how the hue changes very easily there. Next, I'm going to go into the hue versus saturation, and I want to make sure I desaturate the greens a little bit. I'm going to bring the saturation down. I think that looks very nice, but I also want to bring down the reds because these barks are slightly distracting. So we bring that down, increase the contrast within the primaries tab as well. Looks very, very nice. So you can see the before and after. This is already looking very good. There, there isn't really much I've done here. I think this is already looking really sick. So again, three nodes and you're done. But I'm gonna take it to the next level. We're gonna create a new node and I'm gonna drop on effect, click on light rays. This is sick and I can't believe this is free within a result. Drop on the light rays effect onto your fourth node and you can see it creates these streaks of light, which looks pretty interesting. Now, bear with me for a second. Click on this arrow drop down and make sure Open FX Overlay is selected. Now zoom out a little bit and you'll be able to see the sundial sort of thing at the top and you can move this around. And this is what's gonna show where the light source is coming from. So go over to your settings for the length and increase the length fully to grow across the image. I'm also gonna decrease the softness just a little bit and adjust some of these values to make it look as realistic as possible because the more subtle it is, the better it looks. Now playing that back, it looks really great, but the problem is the light source isn't staying the same. So what we're gonna do is keyframe that little sunspot. So go back to your first frame, find the sun, and make sure in your settings tab for the position, you click on the keyframes. So we're gonna keyframe this to move exactly with the sun. Go forward a few frames, and you're gonna reposition it to where the sun is just like that. And then go forward a few more frames again, reposition to where the sun would be again, just like that. And then all the way to the end, reposition again. You're gonna go back again, forward and backwards to make sure it is correctly aligned, and it is. Just like that, you've created the perfect sunlight ray effect, and it looks absolutely crazy. I can't believe we shot that with an iPhone. So there you have it, a quick little tutorial on how you should correctly grade your Apple ProRes log footage. If you guys want more content like this or want me to go more into detail for some of the stylized effects that I did within DaVinci Resolve here, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel for more content like this because I do want to do more filmmaking and color grading content on this channel. I will see you guys again in the next video. Until then, thank you so much for watching and thank you for 100,000 subscribers. I'll see you again in the next video. Until then, take care. Thank you.